We're finally here with the next Chickenosaurus project update. One thing I want to make clear at the beginning here, it seemed to be a lot of confusion in the comments on my last video. There's no gene altering or DNA altering or anything like that involved in this. This isn't Jurassic Park. This is strictly, well, it gets a little bit muddier, but the project goal is to strictly express dormant genes, atavistic genes. Get to that a little bit later. Just for now, know that there's no gene altering. We're not making mutants. They're just chickens with teeth and claws and a tail. That's it. Let's move on. Another question I've seen asked a couple times in the comments in my last video was, what is it really good for? What is the research good for other than making dino chicken pets? Which, first of all, is amazing. What's your problem? Second of all, there is actual real world medical research in this. There was another paper. I'll see if I can find it and link it in the description. But there is actual practical application to this for human beings. Some has already come out of it specifically from this last uh, dino chicken tail project. So it does have real world medical use. It's not strictly for just some of the coolest pets mankind has ever had except for dogs. So don't get hung up on that. Now into the questions that Mr. Horner answered for me here. I wanna say that I'm kind of paraphrasing what he said. I'm not using his exact quotes. Might try to incorporate them in the video, see them on the screen, but I'm paraphrasing what he said. I wanted to know first who were the supporters of the program. So of course, if you've been following me for a while, you know George Lucas of Star Wars fame has been supporting it for a, quite a while. A uh, private investor named Gary Ostrom has been supporting it. And there was a GoFundMe campaign, which I'm sure some of you donated to. He wanted to acknowledge those people. And then Montana State and Clemson Universities are the two places where the bulk of the actual experiments and work were performed so without these people no project i ask what happened to the tail that's the whole reason we're here why is the tail gone birds had tails now they don't mr horner dr horner we'll go with dr horner said initially it may have been some kind of disease that affected the tail or some kind of actual physical trauma to the tail something cut it off bit it off who knows but that's what he speculates happened to the tail of birds back in the, I guess it would be the Cretaceous or after the Cretaceous, whenever they started losing the tail. So that's a little bit of fun fact. Next question was, when can we expect our Chickenosaurus? This was another big question of you guys in the comment. When are we getting one? So there's bad news and worse news. We have not reached that point yet. Uh, it's already taken three times longer than Dr. Horner predicted to get to where we are now. It's really hard to say whether all of the modifications, meaning the teeth, the claws, the tail, would remain viable through an embryonic development. For example, with the tail project, we know why, or we have a clue why, I should say, we don't know exactly why. It fuses together now and makes the pig a style, but what we need to do next is figure out a way to elongate the tail, keep it from fusing, and still grow into a a full-fledged creature that can run around and be healthy. That's kind of where we're at now. That's the next step, combining all the modifications. Now back to the atavistic from earlier. Atavistic means displaying characteristics of a previous cultural era or of a previous ancestral form. That's the definition. The teeth, the claws, and the tail in birds are atavistic characteristics from a previous ancestral form. Dr. Horner said he originally hoped, and this was the goal of the project I was talking about earlier, that all the alterations would be driven by atavistic genes. Meaning all we'd have to do is go back in, look for the old dormant genes and express them. Again, we're still a chicken. There's nothing changing this from making it a chicken. It's just cosmetically different. But now there are different processes involved in the various alterations to the skeletons of birds from their evolution to their uh, non-avian ancestors. So he says the discovery is exciting for science, but disappointing for the ultimate goal of the project. What that means in a nutshell is we just need more time. In a recent tweet, he said that the next step basically is funding. And that means money. So if you want somebody to put money in this, you got to show that it is something people are interested in, something people want. But in the meantime, you can actually do something. 
If you want this project to continue, you need to support Dr. Horner. His Twitter account is at Dusty Dino, so go follow him there. Hit the likes, hit the retweets. He also has, I don't know his Instagram. Share this content, share any content you could find. Just kind of mention it to friends casually. I mean, don't harass people with it. Nobody's going to listen to it if you're doing it like that. You're making small talk. Hey, did you hear about that Chickenosaurus project? And then tell somebody about it. If you want your Chickenosaurus sooner than later, that's what you got to do right now. See you in the next video.